Hello, so Chord Mojo. This is a digital audio converter. Um, I use it um, with my mobile phone uh, through a USB connection in this side and a headphone out that side. So it um, it's a it's a it's a good processor for the music that's already stored in your phone and takes the digital information that's in your phone and converts it to an analog signal um, using what's called a, an, an FPGA, a, um, a field program, programmable gate array. Um, we'll, we'll see it inside after. The, the reason why I'm showing you this in this video, um, the, the benefit and downside both of this system is that it is battery powered. So there's a small um, battery inside this. Um, now I, I bought this when it was released probably five years ago, that, that, that kind of time frame. Um, and of course, as you know from your phone, a, a five-year-old um, lithium battery does de de deplenish quite considerably over that time. Uh, so in this video, I want to change the battery um, and just take you through the process and, and how that's done. So a few things just beforehand. Um, if you use these, you, you press and hold this to turn it on these cycle through to find the, um, the, 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 the volume control this side and, and the, the data rate that comes in that side. Um, on here it shows the, the, the battery level. So w when you're working with batteries, it, it's always good to deplete the battery as far as you can. Um, so solid red, the, the next one down is, is flashing red. So I decided let, let's, let's do it now when there's a little bit of charge left in it. So we just press and hold this to turn it off. Um, we turn it upside down and you can see there are eight uh, socket head hex screws so we can just spin these out quite easily and they're not held very tight um, there's enough of them over a small surface area that the clamping force be spread amongst them. And the last one. Sorry, I should have said beforehand um, the uh, Allen keys I've used are these Weha Ergosum, they're, they're, they're quite good. And the, the, the tool size that you need is very small, it's a 1.5 mil. It's not always included in, in some other. Um, sets of, of hex keys so just make sure that if you are doing it you, you get one with a 1.5 mil hex and um, also actually as you see on the the end of these and um, it's actually a ball head even on something that's this small so some other hex keys that i have i can i can show you no actually i have another set here and it doesn't quite go down to that size so what we'll do is we'll take this off again these are a standard screw size which is good however it will be difficult to find few things just to be careful whenever you're opening um, you can see that the the battery is is, is held captive within the, the top portion and it's it, it's glued with a, a double-sided adhesive tape which we'll get to in a moment there's also the the leads that, that, that travel across onto this side um, and th this is the main FPGA Um, another thing, just to, just to be careful, is is it's better to um, remove the back because, as you'll see in a second, that um, the 
these control balls are actually loosely fit. So these are acrylic spherical balls. And if you turn that upside down, they will fall out. Now it is a good idea to, to, to remove these when you're doing this, just, just to give them a little clean. And um, there is no seal around there, there it's just an interference fit. Um, so it, it can gather dirt and bring dirt inside. Um, I've opened this once before and it, it did show a little bit of um, dirt inside it, so just be careful of that. Interestingly, the, the next model up is called the Cord um, Hugo, um, the Hugo 2, as it is now, and they have changed the the um, the control ball um, arrangement where it's not a continuous ball, um, it is a, a three-quarter domed acrylic piece with, with a plunger in the bottom of it. And, and that's just so that the ball doesn't rotate completely and bring uh, dirt with inside the, the delicate electronics. Now, as, as ever with electronics, is, is just try not to touch it. If you can avoid it, there's, there's, there's no need to do it for this. Um, again, just pinch this and correctly pull out like that. So on mine, you can read Quite well on the side of it. So we have a lithium polymer 7.4 volt, 1.65 amp hour, 12.2 watt watt hours, and you can see manufacturing date 0915. So that ties in with what we were doing. Now um, this adhesive tape is, is still actually fine to use. One thing that is worth to do is to remove this single-sided foam and just to transfer this on to the new battery. Um, it just helps separate the battery from the electronics and, and stops it from but there's a small void between the edge of the battery and, and the electronics so it's just to fill that void now, i bought this online um now i couldn't get sorry, let me just set that down um it's not an exact um size it, it's the, the the battery is is very much the same size um volumetrically but um it just shows in, in, in five years the the amount of um, amp hours has, has increased. So we've got two uh, 2,000 milliamp hours and you've got 1,650 milliamp hours there it would be. So um, the, the key thing to get right is make sure there's lithium polymer, not lithium ion, and it is 7.4 volts. Um, and you can see it's actually printed for Cord Mojo. Now this, I can put a link um, below where, where I got this from. I think it costs about 14 pounds um, delivered. Um, it actually came directly from China. So it did take possibly a month or, or, or maybe more than that to get here. But um, if you can order it in, in good time and, and wait for it, it's fine. It, it looks every bit as good quality as, as the original battery and um, I'm sure this was also made in the, in the same place. Um, you, you can you can feel that it is two two sections in the same as that one. So anyway, we'll we'll, we'll consider or we'll we'll, we'll um, install it into the part. So as ever, just just remember that the um that there is a capacitor. There's a surface mount capacitor which does um limit its the the battery's location within the the, the unit. So. Again, offer it up to it like so, and that's going to sit in there. So we will turn it like this. So this is limiting here, so we want to push it as far down. There as we can. Now we'll just try this first before we You can see this is one way that there, there there's a key on this, so it, it only can go in one way, which is good. Now, sometimes it gives a little flash when you put that in, but this side it didn't. So, again, we just want to offer that up, make sure that the seat's okay, and it does. So, again, we want to look at this in its Flip term, so that was resting on there. So again, we'll just set this on.
And again, just when we have it open, we'll take a quick look just to make sure that there's nothing loose or obviously damaged. And it doesn't appear to be, again, the the density on this board is, is, is very high um, for what it was. But there's nothing obviously damage there and again it, do, it does work absolutely fine um just one thing i was noticing was that the that the battery it didn't last anywhere near as long as it used to um when i first bought it um the battery might have lasted for seven or eight hours of continuous use which at that time was it was it was actually longer than the the foam that I would have had to use with it but of course phones have got quite a bit better now and these secondary devices need to catch up with it um, now here if you, if you can see that's just Close that nice now if you um if you read any of the forums um there is a cord mojo 2 on its way i've been reliably and told um so that will be interesting to try when it comes out um a lot of people actually prefer the sound from the the small mojo rather than the considerably more expensive Hugo 2 um so I, I sorry just just to let you know that there was a um there was a product that came out before this known as the cord Hugo um and, and that really just created the this portability with, within cord who have generally sold considerably more expensive products now that the original cord I believe was about 1200 pounds when it re released um, the, the the this was then released a, a year or two after that, um, and I think I think I paid four hundred pounds for it when when it was released. Um, they have steadily reduced the price over time um, to to these. I think for a short while they were maybe two hundred pounds. That that kind of price point. Um, uh, uh, just just to show that they were near nearing the end of life and in 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 between that there was another product that was released which was uh, called the the um hugo 2 which was again significantly more expensive not an awful lot bigger and um, possibly uh, another 10 or 15 centimeters on each side of it and um, but that product was i think it was 1800 pounds um now the the technology that's in here that it, it uses rob watts who's the he's, he's an independent designer but he designs mostly for for cord and in the um the, the field programmable get array that you saw inside he, he writes the the algorithm that's loaded onto that um in this i, I believe it's never really been publicized properly but i believe there's there's 38,000 taps inside this um within the um within the, the, the court Hugo two there's quite a bit more. I think there's over eighty thousand taps in it. If it's not right, I'll I'll amend it down down in the in the comments. But it, it's about that. Um but of course these keep going up. Um so there is a another product to this which is again bigger again about about this size and it's called the Hugo T T. Um, there was a, a version one and there's a version two of that again using the similar spherical balls to tell you the input rate and the volume control um, again that doubled the amount of taps further and then there was a, a sort of the, the top product um, which is called the core Dave um, so It'll be interesting to see where 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 cord go with us, whether they keep the same form factor as us, or whether they actually increase the the, the form factor. Uh, the reason I'm keeping this here, there was another product that I was was about to buy for this, um, 
So this is a standalone DAC um, and, and headphone amp. Now, um, you do need your mobile phone to, to work with this. Uh, it, it doesn't store music in, anywhere on it. It, it uses um, data that's stored um, on, on your phone or, or streamed on your phone, but you, you, you would use data that's stored on your phone more than, more than likely. Um, th there is another additional item called the, I think it's called the, the, the Cord Poly, and the, the, the poly is designed to to slot onto this side of it, and within the poly there's actually um, a, a recess for a micro SD card, but possibly two micro SD cards, so it, it can hold a, a terabyte of music or so, which is quite a significant amount. Um, and, and then it, it um, works as a as a streamer basically and, and streams the music directly into the cord. Again, you don't control it from the poly. Um, you control it from your phone, but uh, from using um, uh, DLNA um, applications, you're using the, the phone as a control point simply uh, for the poly, which transfers the music into the cord, mo mo mojo, and then out into the headphones. Uh, it, it does quite a few other things. It can use, be used as a rune endpoint and, and things like that as well. But um, so the, the, again, the only reason why I haven't bought one is because I was considering actually buying the more expensive one. Uh, but then when I heard that there was a, a Mojo 2 coming out, I thought, well, let's wait and see what the Mojo 2 has to offer, first of all. OK, so thanks for watching. Um, I hope this was useful. Again, we can just power that on again just to make sure it works. It'll cycle through and oh, you can see it there flashing just to show us that this needs to charge. So I will go and put this on charge and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.